Good morning. Good morning. It is finally Friday. You guys know we look Friday. Look forward to Friday every single week. It's been an interesting one weather-wise. It is hot. It is humid, but it is Florida. So uh, today, though, we are out driving. What you're looking at right now, we're cruising around Lake Nona. I have a special guest in the vehicle. He's no stranger to me, and he's really no stranger to Central Florida, but part of my hometown and represents Osceola County. I have Commissioner Brandon Arrington. Sir, thank you for uh, joining me today. Thanks so much for having me on your, on your awesome truck. Yeah, here. well, you had me out on uh, the airboats and all that fun stuff. I figured we've got to get you in here. And I was blown away because I felt bad. I had no idea that you were the chairman for the Central Florida Expressway Authority. And I felt I felt bad because I felt like that's something I should have known. Yeah, that's, um, all, that's all right, though. Hey, it's a big deal. And part of that responsibility is got to have some type of passion for transportation and you go back to your experience you've served on a lot of transportation boards what what, what was it about transportation that really got you got you going about it you, to your point Steve I have I've have had the chance to serve on a lot of transportation boards whether it's Metroplan Sunrail Lynx CFX but to me transportation is probably the key element of local government okay and, and I say that because when you create a new transportation corridor or a new road a new bus route you've created economic opportunity for wherever that new arterial is um, as we joked before right if you've got a highway you create a new exit you have already created a new economy at that exit for that I like community. how you said that earlier because yeah I, the first thing I think of though is like 528 out way out on the east side you know you think innovation you think Wedgefield area and it's like man all they did was create another ramp and boom it just blew up out there yeah. and it's good growth I think yeah um, but you, you have a point and then when you create access then it's easier for other communities to kind of commute around um, you are a long-term Osceola County resident. Yes, sir. Uh, it's pretty awesome because, hey, it's my home as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about your time down in Osceola. What got you into politics? Sure. Um, I, as, a, as a kid born and raised in Osceola County who grew up, my uh, my dad's family moved there to Osceola County in the 50s. They were dirt farmers. Okay. So I grew up selling watermelons on the corner of John Young and Main Street as a kid. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, but but also my, my parents were, uh, an ur my mother's an urban planner by, by education and trade, and my father's a civil engineer, so I always grew up working in an engineering office, working as a land surveyor. So I really got to understand development, transportation, and then also every time I travel somewhere, I know this is a little geeky, but I really enjoy looking at their their, their systems. No, I get it. And whether I get it's it. mass transit or whether it's their roadway systems, how we move goods and services and people, right? I mean, that's that's the key element, you know, and, and probably the, the biggest complaint we see in Central Florida, right? Is, is the need for more transportation options all the well, time so. all the time because if there's something that someone's going to complain about it's traffic because hey it affects every single one of us that's right and as the years have gone we've known it's grown like crazy out here people want to move to Florida we understand it and we're out here along 417 right and we're cruising southbound right now about to approach Boggy Creek it's obvious we're under the expansion plan that's taking place cleaning right. this area up I'm excited about it because hey I'm that nerd too. I love the, talking about traffic, love the logistics of it. And when you drive out here, you can already tell, hey, things are getting smoother. Yep. It's starting to look nicer out here. But as a state trooper, my always worry is the what if about yep. things when that crash occurs. And there are some places when I was a trooper out on like I-4 where you couldn't really do enforcement mm -hmm. because there was no shoulders. Yep. Or when a crash happened, even if it was a minor crash, it would cause such huge delays because we had no place to put the cars. Exactly. Now you guys have not really come up with the idea, but have adopted this thing called flex lanes. That's right. And when I first heard it, I was like, man, this is interesting. Some people were like, what are they going to do? Like shift the lanes over? And I'm like, well, that's actually what they're talking about doing. That's exactly right. So how'd this come up and where do you guys grab the idea and say, hey, Let's do this here in Orlando. You know, we our team at CFX is is very proactive at, at always looking at emerging technologies and emerging opportunities. Okay. And I, I really think the flex lane plays into that. As you were talking about, we're under under expansion here on 417, a lot through Osceola County. Um, our our ridership has doubled wow. in the last five years. So every time every car you imagine, think about five years ago, there was one less car next to you on. 
on four seven. That's pretty significant. It is, and 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 that that also goes to the kind of the story of Florida. You've got to realize Florida doesn't do a lot of investment in in their transportation network, right? Because we're a low tax state, right? Um, and that's why we have more toll roads here in the state of Florida than any other state, and that's okay. why CFX plays such a. I'm little, glad you explained that yeah. because I think most people just assume. Oh, it's politics, or it's this, or someone's making this. No, there is a reason. It's look if you like low taxes, well, you're gonna you're gonna pay a little bit that's, more that's, elsewhere. That's right. It is trade offs, right? And when people talk about, and that's the beauty of an expressway system, right? It's a user fee as opposed to a tax system. If if you don't want to use the expressway, you're you're more than welcome not to. But to your point about flex lanes, we want to make sure that the expressway system operates like an expressway okay. and that you don't get stuck in regular traffic. So and these are one of the signs we're approaching right now. This is. People, you know, they're not active. They've been testing them. Yep. They've been testing them. And those are these big boxes that we've been seeing. That's right. And so every half a mile on the sections of roadway where we're putting in the flex lanes, you'll see these little signs above the roadway that will indicate the lane usage once it's active. So we're in a lane that's driving. So right now as we approach this, it would be a green it would be a green mark on the screen above us meaning this lane is open and what it would do is it would create a shoulder opportunity for shoulder usage when there are ac accidents or impaired vehicles along the system okay and, and what that will allow us to do is if that lane is is no longer mobile we will be able to open the shoulder to almost split the seas if you will interesting and, and start to move the cars around where they're impaired so the traffic keeps moving because that's one of the big things from an expressway system, especially with all of our expansion. We want to make sure that you're moving at a good rate of speed. See, you guys are speaking my language because in the crash investigator world, we understand the longer traffic is stopped, the more cause there is for a crash, another secondary crash to occur. Uh, if you guys are watching at News 6 Plus and ClickOrlando.com, you can see on your screen right now some of the graphics of what we're talking about. We're talking about roadway incidents, exactly what's going to be taking place out here and what the signs are going to look like. Central Florida Expressway has put this graphic together so that you're able to see. It's going to be about a mile and a half ahead of an incident, normal operations there, and the signs above here will indicate to you what lane they want you to enter. And in some cases, if you guys are watching, I'm talking to you, they will instruct you, they want you to move over to the shoulder. Now, you've heard me talk about this before, Florida statute specifically says that the only time you can operate your vehicle on the shoulder is if you are instructed to do so by a law enforcement officer. Here, the state of Florida, by putting these signs here, are the traffic control device. So when they're up here and these signs are saying that, you are then authorized then to go ahead and do that, which I think is pretty cool. Because then as we're approaching here, southbound 417 at the turnpike, these black boxes here would be illuminated saying, hey, left lane is closed a mile and a half ahead. Get out of it now yep. and scoot on over to the lane that is actively open. Commissioner, I think this is ultimately that whole, there's always an instrument I'm talking about. I always mess it up. The accordion effect. Mm -hmm. You guys are almost eliminating that accordion effect out on the highway yep. and that crash from happening. Well, and that's the hope, right? We not only want to keep people moving, but to your point, anytime you have stop and go traffic, you, you set up for more back end and rear end opportunities as well. Just in that in that management of, of moving that traffic around the scene and accident scene. So by actually having use of the shoulders, it's actually cost effective because if we were to actually widen and add another lane, okay. it's, it's a lot more expensive. But by using the shoulder, we're, we're creating a low cost mechanism to keep the traffic moving in a safe, in a very safe manner, as you said, knowing a, a mile and a half before the incident to get over. So it's not that, you know, in and out that we all deal yeah. with when we get into an accident on, I always think of I-75 or the turnpike. Oh. Uh, I-75, when there's an accident on I-75, it, it not only shuts down the, the one side of the road. You're there for on, a minute. Yeah. It, the other side shuts down as well. So. And this, this mechanism will really allow us to try and eliminate some of those. those I love issues. the cost effectiveness as well, because I didn't think about that. Like, yeah, it costs a lot of money to expand a road. And yeah, this stuff is probably not cheap with the technology behind it. But let's be real, in theory, we're just putting signage over the road. Yeah. And you guys are creating temporary lanes in times of high volume traffic because of an incident yeah so question for you would these be used only 
when a lane is obstructed. For now, that's, okay. that's the plan for CFX is to use it just for obstructed lanes. But in the long term, it could also be used for just regular management of, of flow. Interesting. Um, obviously, I like um, the idea. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. And in that way, the shoulder still serves for emergency vehicle purposes. Or And if you do break down, we always tell people, try and get to the right side Absolutely, of the road, not the left yeah. side of the road as well. So that's a big deal. And then you, you made a great point earlier, Steve, about when it's not in use. When the red check mark or the red X is on the sign, if you do use those lanes, I believe it's a $163 ticket and three points on, on your license, yep. as you're very familiar with. This is with how it. you know you're an Osceola County Commissioner, because that's the price in Osceola County. It's uh, Actually, you guys are more expensive. Okay. It's 166 in Osceola. Is that right? Okay. 164 in Orange. You guys got to get your extra $2. Hey, you know, whatever it takes. Whatever, whatever it, takes. it takes. But these, now they're testing. They're actually illuminated here. Yeah. So you'll be able to see. So for example, as we're here, we're in the middle travel lane, and we'll use an example. It is red, so it says test, so we're not going to move, but this would indicate that a half a mile possibly up ahead, yeah. there's an incident, mm -hmm. and you need to get out of this travel lane. That's right. That I, I just think, one, I think it saves, it could save lives mm -hmm. from first responders on scene. Exactly. Because vehicles aren't just flying right up on these road rangers. And I love saying this, your troopers, I don't lend my troopers out, but part of the Central Florida Expressway Authority, I don't think a lot of people even even know, we'll let them in. You have your own designated assigned troopers that work directly with, hand in hand, the Central Florida Expressway Authority. There's a great partnership with the Florida Highway Patrol. Yes, sir. We, you're exactly right. We have our own our own squad, our own battalion. I'm, yep. You could probably use a better word. Yeah, your own squad works. <laughs> But we have our own squad that is specific to the CFX toll roads. Um, and in fact, we've even lobbied the state for the last couple of years to be able to add more personnel. Wow. Um, that is a cost that's picked up by CFX. Um, but it's really it's really important that we have those individuals, not only from a, from a, a safety standpoint, because it, as we all know, there's they're, you're moving at a high rate of speed on yeah. CFX's roads, um, an average of probably 70 miles an hour. and so. We need those folks to make sure people aren't speeding, make yep. sure we can move cars to safety. And I think the reaction time for you guys to have your own squad, it's not like you're pulling from a trooper that might be at Sand Lake and John Young worrying about something else. That's right. Here, these are higher speed crashes, and you're able to have designated troopers to come out and handle business. That's right. And, and as you know, having that those folks specific to us in our roadways also helps with response to traffic incidents. Yep. And things of that nature because we all know how difficult it's a mess that man. can be getting it's somebody to, to show up on scene i always joke when i lived in los angeles and got into a small fender bender and called 911 they basically just like no nah, you're good take yeah, notes have a nice day have a good day there's, Call the insurance there's company. not going to be an officer showing up for your wow. fender bender but wow so i mean so it's, it's really imperative to have that and you know a lot of people don't probably think about the amount of time and money we invest in the safety of cfx and and whether people just see a road commissioner yeah. and they and I don't like I, I come to the defense of roadways a lot because all oh, the roadway this and the roadway that I'm like thousands of people have driven out here today mm -hmm. and you're the only one that crashed mm -hmm. so the safety mechanisms that you guys put in place whether it's the reflectiveness out on the road yeah. or even the new signage I see because I pay attention to this stuff I can tell that there's new material being used oh, yeah. on our exit signs so that they reflecting off your headlights and so that they're weatherproof. Most people don't even appreciate, let alone understand that this stuff is there. That's true. And you know, one of the biggest thing I think our, our team at CFX has done and it, it is also, which is really imperative, is the wrong way driving onto exit Absolutely. Ramps. And it, it, that, that people, I don't think we realize what how terrible that is when someone gets I think most on. people think really people are going the wrong oh, way right. it happens yeah late at night you, you're not sure where you're going yep you accidentally turn the wrong way that you're not supposed to and next thing you know you you're the cause of a head-on collision and and so that that technology and those signage as well really goes a long way to, to keeping people safe out here we we want to like you said everyone thinks about roadways just getting from point a to point b right we want to make sure you get to point a to point b and, and get back and get back yes and are safe and do it efficiently as well so you know that's that's one of the things we really work hard at and our, our like i said our team over there really puts a lot of emphasis on making sure our roadways are are safe not only by design but all the other elements and features on there as well when are we looking to for drivers to 
to, for this to be completely functioning uh, out here on 417? When can they start to expect to see those green arrows lit up consistently? The, right now, the current plan is from, from iDrive to John Young Parkway. Where we're at right now. Yeah, we're at we're, iDrive exactly. right now. We're about to turn around and get back on. This section is supposed to be completed by in 2024. Nice. And then the rest of the sections on 417 and 429 will be come online as construction allows and hopefully wrapping up all of this even on 429 basically in the next year by summer late 2025 as well. So this is this is a pretty rapid project. It you is. guys are pretty focused on putting this in. I did not know that this was going to be as expanded as it was. So we are looking at Sierra 429. Yep. Are we looking at all of State Road 417? No, I, I believe it's, it's um, tw I want to tell up you, to 22 mile? miles okay, so on up to 417 and I think 13 miles on 429. Okay. And it's in those more con more congested areas. So when you give me the name, tw when you give me the number 22, I'm thinking, so from about where we're at mm -hmm. to just about Narcusi Moss Park yep. area. That's probably okay. about right. That's I, I probably do about speak right. my, uh, my and, and if you've traveled that, that area, which it's is a the mess. part of 417 that I do travel, and it is... It's granted it's all under construction right. and it'll be fantastic when it gets widened and the safety. Got to get worse before it gets better. That's and right. I tell people that. they're like, "Oh, well, they're going to have to shut lanes down." I go, no, "I know, but you're going to get three more when it's done." That's true. It's like going to Publix and getting a BOGO. Yeah. Kind of thing. But just yeah. wait, wait it out. And kind of and and much CFX is much like Osceola County where it's under construction right now and right. Over, over the next 5 years at CFX I think we've got five billion dollars worth of capital improvements wow. that'll be happening throughout our system as well, and that's Point Sienna Parkway widening and extension. That's the east, uh, the Lake Orange connector, um, widening of 417 and other systems right. as well. So, a lot is happening. A, a lot of, once again, economic benefit for the amount of work that's getting put back into our community through tolls that we all generate and that our tourists, right. tourists generate as well. So well, I'm a big road guy and you know, I do give, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy holding a lot of you guys to the standard as well because listen, at the end of the day, you guys are the ones making the decisions, what roads get put elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And anytime I hear about a new road, you're never going to get me to be against it. There you because go. transportation does need to happen. Uh, if communities are being built, we need to obviously increase the roadways. You guys just opened up Neovation. Way, yeah. Uh, yeah. A nice little cut through there exactly. between uh, Neptune and 192. Exactly. I'm going to actually add that to my on patrol here soon because oh, I want to come out and drive that. Uh, but it, it's, I don't think people, people need to understand that this is not a, there's no end game in this. And what I mean by, there's always going to be something to improve on. Yes. And I, I want people to really understand that you guys know that. Well, and it's not going to happen overnight. No, that's right. And, and you know, and I think it's a great statement. I, I think as long as people continue to move to Central Florida at fifteen hundred people a, a, a week is it's, 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 it, it is, is what it's I a heard. crazy number. I think it's a thousand to the state a day and fifteen hundred to, to Central Florida. And as long as we're a community that that and a state, I should say that that pushes and embraces growth. We're going to continue. Smart to, growth. Yeah, Smart yeah. Growth. Well, and, and but our, our state, and most people don't know this, the state of Florida puts population projections on counties. Okay. And counties have to live up to those population projections. Gotcha. So we have to plan and for that population increase over over the next 10 to 50 years. And so those are beaver numbers that they, they create. Interesting. And so it I is. Like yeah, so when, when we talk about growth, you know, it's. Local government basically can create a mechanism that outlines growth, but we unfortunately have to follow the instructions from the top. That's right, and as I remind people, local government is just an arm of the state government by that's our constitution. True. Yeah. So we we have to follow the parameters they set, and, and you can you roll with what you get. That's to right. Make it better for your community. And, and to your point, we're as long as we're continuing growing, we're going to continue to have to add new infrastructure elements to move people around until we get to the point. Um, as you were saying with smart growth, where our densities get high enough, walkability becomes more of an opportunity and mass transit can even be more successful right. than it is today. And Because I mean, in a lot of areas, even even where we were just in Lake Nona, right. we talk about we're blowing what up. a roadway did. When they first put 417 in and Medical City was there, Medical City was a pasture. For, yeah. for 10 years, right, right? but we right. knew that was Medical City. That it was going to that's, happen. That's going to happen. Right. And if you didn't have 417, Lake Nona, Medical not, City would not exist. I agree with you. It would still be a rural agricultural land, and, and some people may prefer that. Some yeah, but I think Lake Nona kind of embraced 
kind of a lot of that agriculture because they yep. promised to keep so much of their area green. Mm -hmm. They've lived up to that. They have, and and our partnership in working with them in Osceola County on on their new development that really lays out development in Osceola County to the year 2060. Okay. And so, and when I say that, we've already got it gridded, laid out. There's an expressway designed to come through them to come down to 192. There are boulevards, and and unfortunately. A lot of our design and growth that we had in the 70s, 80s, and 90s wasn't necessarily smart growth. Well, right. it was, you know, one neighborhood, a neighborhood with one road in, one road out. It's walled off to the world. And, well, because no one wanted to think about what were the future and we're going to have this entire area one day be multifamily homes. Yes. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, no one, no one I mean, and, and as a kid who was, once again, born and raised here, the, the joke my brother and my dad used to always tell, we would be riding in a, in a truck, okay, and my brother would say, hey, you remember when this road was two lanes? Yeah. And then my dad would lean over and go, I remember when it was dirt, and we used to drive a tractor <laughs> down it. Like, I mean, that's a reality. No, you're that's right. That's a reality you're right. in Central Florida. my dad said the same thing to me yeah. about 192. He goes, I remember when this was all cow pastures yeah. out here. Yeah. And I could not process that. You know, we're out here, you talked a lot about future what's happening here what other things and what other techno tech really technological advances in transportation can we begin to expect and see maybe in the future you know probably the biggest thing the most exciting one that we have recently in cfx is our chargeable lanes uh, it's, a, okay. it's a test pilot project we're doing on the lake orange connector where you have to have specific technology, right? Uh -huh. My electric car can't drive on it and be recharged. Okay. So what it is going to be a test pilot where the electrification will actually be built into the road. Your car will have, and I'm not a scientist, right now have some, type of, some type of way to transfer that energy from the roadway back into your car to charge it while, you're, you, ready while you're driving down the roadway. So this is going to be a test bed for this opportunity because as we, as we continue to add electric vehicles to our fleet, one of the big expansion they're looking at for electric vehicles is specifically our, our, our trucks, our tractor trailers, our cargo movers. Okay. And so if you could put them on a highway, reduce their carbon emissions, and not have to make them stop to refuel. Then it begins to make sense. It regenerate, right? Right. We can lower the costs of moving goods and services, right? Because we can eliminate those fuel costs in those trucks. We can have cleaner air instead of the diesel fuel. The vehicle. idea of not stopping. Right. Wouldn't that be and fantastic? Just, and just being able to go. Go. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously going to have to hit a restroom or grab a of beverage course, but somewhere along the line, but... Like, no one would have thought of that ever in their entire lifetime 10 years ago, yeah. let alone three, four years mm -hmm. ago. So, obviously, that is the future and special vehicle, but we thought Bluetooth was a special vehicle right? at one point. Now, I'm using it in 10 different ways in this truck right now. Well, and, 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 and to your point, every base model vehicle now has those features Correct. already built into it. So if we were able to test bed that technology, prove it, then there, there's opportunities for that expansion, not only in our system, but really globally, right. we're able to, to move that forward. So that's really one of the bigger technologies. And then also, it's not a technology, but it's more of a mindset. Okay. And it's how we, <coughs> how CFX uses its land and its corridors. Okay. And so we want to think of our expressways as just moving cars, right? But but we also could create trail opportunities for bicycle pedestrians. So you've got public health opportunities. That are incorporated, incorporated within the yeah. transportation? Within our right-of-way. If we've got the right-of-way opportunity, there's no reason to say there couldn't be a trail system on the far edge of, of our, our roadways that's utilized for just you know recreation. Right, if you have these communities that are butted up towards the expressway, yep. like, I don't mean, to, it looks cool. Our expressways are, rather beautiful yeah. in some areas, yeah. why not put a park close sure. and off the area or, or, or trail where, where people can get from here to Lake Nona exactly. on their bicycle. Exactly. And granted, we, we've got our retaining walls, and if we designed it smart enough, we could move those retaining walls eight feet in, put a sidewalk or trail path just on the back side of them. And then also, we've really started to get more of a, an environmental approach, too, when it comes to our crossings. Okay. Um, and I say that from an animal standpoint. Because there, I like where the, you're going. The network for migration of animals, native in, in, in the state of Florida, they move. The Florida panther, the bear, they, they move throughout our community. 
So and please tell me you. I know where you're going is what I, I see in like the Northwest mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Is that where you're going well, with this? Well, we've got raised bridges that create animal crossings or, or bridges over our roadways. Right. That, once again, create animal crossings. And it's not just imperative for the animal, but also just the, the flora and fauna as well. Absolutely. Because just how how, na- how natural species work. I don't know right. how it's better no, to yeah, say. Yeah. But really making sure that it's not... It's just not a concrete roadway. That it's it's a, it serves a purpose, and then you've also got to realize we've the amount of ponds that we have as well, and how we utilize those ponds. We've already been looking at solar outlays on top of those ponds to be able to capture that energy to put them back in to to funnel our our toll booths. Or people down. need to understand this is so much more than just putting a road down and marking it. Exactly. And, and there is so much more that goes into it. You guys are doing your best to think about the environment, work on it, That's right. focus on it, make it better, well, include it, your community in on enjoying a construction site yeah. being installed in their community. Yeah, and well, it, you know, it, and there again, we go back to us continuing to evolve as a community, and it, it's imperative that we do have new facilities and new opportunities to connect us all until we get to a different mode of transportation where we're not all in our cars by ourselves right driving so it's it's imperative but it's been it's been amazing to be able to work with cfx to have such a a proactive organization that is continually looking to create new corridors to your point which are very difficult to do anytime you put in a roadway somewhere there hasn't been a roadway there there's going to be headaches right i mean there's going to be a roll with it it's better than you gotta i like to think about the future i like to think that look i might be sitting in some traffic right now but I can see two more lanes out here yeah. that at some point I'm going to get to drive on. That's right. Some point is going to eliminate that ramp from being backed up. Yeah. So I really appreciate you hopping. I know you're busy schedule. No worries. Glad uh, to do it. You guys have an, a great, an amazing communication team. Not only you do for the commission, but with over at CFX, you guys make yourself available to me and our team all the time. Oh, and when I reached out, they were like, or no, I reached out to you, yeah. and then May reached out and go, hey, you're over, you're going behind us. And I was like, listen, I'm Trooper Steve, and I kind of know him, so, so I just we're, asked. We're all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. But for you to come out and do this, I really appreciate it. Your passion for transportation really gets me excited, because not many people, I'll say it, are excited about where a road is going to go, or what the numbers and the logistics behind it, because like you said, there's so many layers to this yeah. and you have to be you have to be really in it and your commission job is basically a full-time gig mm-hmm. and then you're doing all this stuff on the side so uh, as the the local transportation expert or the nerd I really appreciate you oh, really focusing so on stuff like this and being from Osceola County makes me proud too because hey my mom's down in the Point Sienna area. That's right. Too, and so. listen, we're we're trying to get Southport Parkway connected to I-4 and to the Turnpike. So that will change things. That will change everything, right? If, if you could connect Southport yeah. to that back end of like Kissimmee Park and yeah. all that. Yeah, we bust out into St. Cloud. That will be life-changing. St. Cloud can get an opportunity to get on the Turnpike to get where they need to be. It would have taken me 20 minutes to get to you the other day rather it than would've. an hour and a half. Well, you're exactly <laughs> right. And then there, there again, it, it literally will open up the... You know, the amount of industrial distribution point opportunities once we connect the turnpike to I-4 with a new route, Man. And the amount of relief we'll be able to provide to I-4, it's it's exponential. And and, and I, like I said, I, I'm excited talking about it because, right. because I mean, here again, it, it will change the, the entire outlook of a community I grew up in overnight once it's open. I mean, granted, it's going to take us seven, probably eight years to get there, but... Well, and I think before we wrap, it's more for me I look at it from two different perspectives because I got to live in so many places I grew up in the Point Siena Kissimmee area my adulthood I lived in St. Cloud for a while while I was a trooper and I think for those two communities who are immensely diverse Mm -hmm. to be able to have access to each other yeah would be pretty awesome you're telling me someone in Point Siena could cut their drive time in half to get to St. Cloud and go enjoy the lake. Yeah. Go enjoy the lake. Front, exactly. Uh, downtown historic St. Cloud, and then be able to get back to their residential community that they enjoy in Point Siena. Well, and the same. I thing. love it. And the same thing for St. Cloud. Think about it. Right. For those folks, let's just say they want to go to Disney World. That is probably a forty-five minute drive, if not more. If not more. <laughs> if not more. And if we can have a road that literally connects them right to I four and four twenty nine. Skip. 
192 complete. All together. All together. We just back. I mean, we you could shave your, your commute time by 30 to 40 minutes easily. And so that's that's why it's so important to, to make sure. Get on sure. the Guardian Galaxies a lot faster. That, that is true. You yeah. sure could. Or you get to Margaritaville down there real hey, quick. Hey, I'm too. down. I'm always so. down. So, <laughs> Commissioner, thank you. Steve, brother. Always a pleasure. pleasure. Guys, uh, you guys can follow uh, the Commissioner, uh, Brandon Arrington, on all his social media platforms. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. He's definitely on Facebook. Uh, he's also uh, the chair for the Central Florida Expressway Authority. We were talking about flex lanes today. Uh, so if you want more information, give him a follow. Always giving information up. But this story will live over at clickorlando.com. And you guys can watch this. And, of course, give CFX a follow. Because whenever anything's going on or any of these updates, especially those overnight closures, they are always putting that information out. So get out there. Enjoy your Friday, please. Wear your seatbelts. Commissioner, thank you again. Thank you, Steve. Uh, you guys it. drive safely out there and have a good day.